نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فهل ينظرون إلا الساعة أن تأتيهم بغتة وقد جاء أشراطها فأنا لهم إذا جاءتهم ذكرهم فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إني أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام الحمد لله ما يجيب رادة زين أندز يشو تنك الله سبحانه وتعالى أجين الله سبحانه وتعالى is given us the opportunity to witness this day of Jumu'ah from all the people that were in the dunya last week Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us in the condition that we are able to once again come and witness this day of Jumu'ah. On <coughs> this day we find a person will get opportunity to get much more reward than what a person can get on any other day. Therefore we should try and take maximum benefit of this day of Jumu'ah. And the ibadah that a person is to make, one is a person is able to, you should try and recite Surah Al-Kahf on this day. We should try as far as we can to see how we can increase in durood and salutations upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is mentioned in the narration that that person who will send a hundred duroods on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the eve of Jumu'ah, that is Thursday night, or on the day of Jumu'ah itself. And that person, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, will fulfill a hundred of his needs. 30 of those needs will be fulfilled in this world and the other 70 will be fulfilled in the Akhirah. So this is something which is very, very easy. Every person is able to do it. All we have to read the shortest durood, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Al-Ummi. It will take a person three to four minutes to do this a hundred times. Therefore, we should try and see how every Jumu'ah we do not miss this out. And if possible, we increase until a thousand duroods. Together with that, we should try and see how Throughout this day, we engage ourselves in dua. One narration, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that that person who will engage himself in dua is a certain moment within this day that no matter who makes a dua on that moment, if he finds that moment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will definitely accept this dua of his. Some ulama mentioned that this is in between the two khutbas that take place. Other ulama mentioned it is between the time of Asr to Maghrib. So we should try and engage ourselves more in dua. Together with that, we should try and understand that the objective and the purpose why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us into this dunya is to see how we can become the slaves and how we can become the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else that is connected to the dunya, connected to this worldly life, is by the way. But the main objective and the main reason that we have been sent here is to see how we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to see how we can give this preference to each and every single thing around us. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent and all the other Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam also, then they came with the, the message of the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the message that people should follow the Nabi of that time. And together with that, they came with certain warnings of, to people and certain information. And one of those things was that there is a day that is going to come, which definitely Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also mentions in the Quran. In the la fiha. There is a certain day that is going to come in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to destroy this entire world. It is going to be, that is known as the day of Qiyamah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as As-Sa'ah, the hour. May that moment when everything will cease now to exist. And the only thing that will now remain is the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So, Anbiya alayhi musalam, they came and they warned us about these things. And they told us, that a person should prepare himself for the akhirat before such a time comes upon him when he will now not be able to make ibadat anymore. He will not be able to worship Allah anymore. He will not be able to be obedient to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. So this, this qiyamah is something which is definitely it is going to take place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that speaking with regards to the people of the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he came and he gave them advice and he gave them nasihat. And he told them to come on to the commands of Allah and to follow his way of life. But there were certain people that they were not accepting this nasihat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were not making amal, they were not bringing these things within their life. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him a question. He says, Are they waiting for it? They are not waiting for anything else except the day of Qiyamah. And that it will come upon them all of a sudden. When a person, the day of Qiyamah, nobody knows when it's going to take place. Allah didn't give the knowledge of this to anybody else. It is only in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is definitely it is something which is going to take place. So Allah says, Are the people waiting? They're waiting for the day of Qiyamah before they can make amal on the commands of Allah, before they can follow the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are they waiting for their time? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When this day of Qiyamah will come, Baghdatan, all of a sudden it will come. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Faqad ja'a ashratuha. The signs of Qiyamah have already come. One of the main signs of Qiyamah was the coming of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith he narrates, and he says that, Bu'ithtu ana wa sa'atu kahatin. That myself in Qiyamah, we have been sent like this. And he made indication by means of his uh, index finger and his middle finger. So close he said that. We have been sent and now Qiyamah is going to come. This was the first major sign of the coming of Qiyamah. Then together with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with regards to iqtarabati sa'atu wa anshaqqa al-qamar, that Qiyamah itself has come close. And the splitting of the moon in the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this was one of the most major signs of Qiyamah going to take place. And then during his life, many other things had taken place. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then, in explanation of the coming of the day of Qiyamah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then explained many, many things that would take place, which would indicate towards a person that now the day of Qiyamah is now coming very, very close. So these signs, Ulama mentioned that it is, doesn't have to be specific to a certain time. Sometimes these signs, they will repeat themselves, they will come over and over. But when a person, the objective of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because one is a person, he sees the sign of Qiyamah, he speaks about it as is common today. You will find it on WhatsApp, on the messages, and on social media, uh, this earthquake has taken place. This is a major sign of Qiyamah, and this is going to happen, and that is going to happen. And the Jal is going to come, and all these different things are going to take place. So that in itself, just knowing that the sign of Qiyamah came is of no benefit to a person. Hey, okay, I saw some earthquake took place. So now I know, okay, that is a sign of Qiyamah. I saw a different thing where it is mentioned that people will start now uh, disobeying their parents. A person will give preference to his friends over the command of his father. A person will now start. Uh, we will find that singing and music will become common. And we will find that people will now start drinking alcohol openly. And all these different, uh, different fitnas will take place. So a person he has information about this, he knows about it, message comes to him, he forwards it on WhatsApp, he forwards it on social media, he did not gain any benefit from there. Even if he saw this, the greatest sign of Qiyamah coming, he saw the sun rising from the, he saw the sun that is rising from the west instead of rising from the east, or he saw some, whatever signs of Qiyamah there is, he saw that major sign, he knew about it, that is of no benefit to him. The object of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and the Amiya Ali Muslim warning people about the day of Qiyamah was that a person he should hurry towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the day of Qiyamah comes upon him all of a sudden. So more important than knowing the signs of Qiyamah and witnessing the signs of Qiyamah that are going to take place is that a person needs to prepare himself for the Akhirat before that time comes upon him. So these signs, these things are supposed to take a person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's supposed to take us closer to the obedience of Allah, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when now these things will be of benefit to us. Merely knowing that it is a sign, that some sign has taken place, some earthquake has taken place, some flooding has taken place in some area. Now we say, no, these are all signs of Qiyamah. But no change comes in our life. That means I have not really taken the lesson that I was supposed to take from those signs of Qiyamah. So, yeah, in one narration it comes in the Qiyamah of each and every single person, is on the day when he will die. That is when his Qiyamah starts already. Because he is going to be questioned, his journey towards the Akhirat is starting already. Yes, the day of Qiyamah itself, that is something else when everybody will be taken out of their graves. And people will have to now proceed towards the plains of resurrection. And people will have to start answering for their deeds. But every person, his Qiyamah starts already the day when he passes away. So this is uh, the lesson and the object of the Anbiya Ali Musalam telling us about these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us about the day of Qiyamah in the Quran was so that people could take heed and start making an effort to change their lives. Therefore, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran, that Now the day of Qiyamah all of a sudden comes upon a person 
his death comes upon him. And all that nasihat, all that advice of the Anbiya Musalam, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the ulama that were given to people. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, where is that advice going to benefit him now? He has already seen the things of the unseen. Malakul, the angel of death, Malakul Maud has come. He's taken his soul already. Now it is too late for him. Now he wishes. You find similar was the story of Fir'aun. That he, Musa alayhi salam gave him dawah. He called him towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuously. Uh, he knew that what Musa alayhi salam is saying is true. But he would not, his pride would not let him accept it. Until such a time finally came upon him. When he was now, uh, in, he was going to be drowned. At that moment he said, now I bring Iman in the rob of Musa and Harun alayhi salam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, ah, Al-An, now you want to bring Iman? Before that you had already disobeyed us, you refused to accept. Now it was too late for a person. Now the day of his day of Tiyama started already. Where is the nasihat and the advice going to be of any benefit to him? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so now a person is seeing all these signs, he's seeing all these things happening. So what should he do now? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ He should renew his yaqeen and his conviction that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran itself was revealed to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was no doubt that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no doubts, he had no misgivings about the fact that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that you should know that Allah so there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. The command that was given here was so that he could renew his intention. He could increase his yaqeen. He was mentioned so that now the yaqeen of la ilaha illallah could be increased. So all as we see all these things taking place around us, that uh, a person is seeing different situations around him. Whether it is people have started now taking towards uh, drinking has become common. Uh, t- people taking alcohol, people are committing zina openly. And all the different signs of Qiyamah, he sees earthquakes taking place, flooding taking place, voices being raised within the masajid. All these are signs of Qiyamah. Now what is his job? His job is to now reaffirm his conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The outside the world will tell him that this earthquake is taking place because of some scientific thing and the flooding is taking place because of this. But to reaffirm his conviction that whatever is happening in the dunya is only happening by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the will and the permission and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing can happen. And naturally when a person reaffirms this conviction, that I am not supposed to be turning my heart towards anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the kalima we read, la ilaha illallah, ilah. What is ilah? It is that which the heart of a person turns towards to in the time of need. So wherever our hearts are turning in the time of need and necessity, that is who we have made our ilah. Our person that we have to worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in every given situation, how my heart can turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is the one that can solve my problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only being that can remove difficulty. Whatever hardship has come upon me, the only being that can remove this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anbiya alayhi salam taught us this. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Yusuf alayhi salam, his beloved son was taken away from him. At that time he made the statement, Inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ilallah. My complaints and my grief and my worry and concern is only directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is only the, the only one that can remove these problems of ours. So at that time, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ A person turns his heart back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is the one that is going to solve my problem. Whatever difficulty I am in, whatever difficulty has taken place, whatever sign of Qiyamah has come, it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the object was to see how my heart can turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us that we should do, was تَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And seek forgiveness for your sins. And together with that, seek forgiveness on behalf of the whole Ummah, on all the believing males, all the believing females. Seek forgiveness on behalf of these people. So we should see that how, number one, we reaffirm our conviction in La ilaha illallah. And number two, we make istighfar, abundance of istighfar. We seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that person who it is the aqaid in the belief of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that he did not commit any sin during his life. Anbi alayhi wa sallam, they are ma'asum, they are protected from committing sin. Yet Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sahaba radiallahu anhum that sometimes uh, I make istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 70 times in a day. In some narrations it comes more than 100 times in a day. So the Nabi of Allah who never committed any sin was making istighfar 100 times every day. Us who are committing so much of sin, we are not free from committing of sin. Uh, how much more are we in need of making istighfar and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
And together with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, they don't only worry about your own self. They worry about all the other people. And instead of only seeking forgiveness for yourself, seek forgiveness on behalf of the believing males, on behalf of the believing females, the Muslims that are males, the Muslims that are females. Seek forgiveness on their behalf. Say Astaghfirullah on behalf of the whole Ummah. So we should try and see how we can bring this within our lives. Number one, we reaffirm our conviction in Allah that everything that is happening in the world is only happening by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, we continuously and excessively increase ourselves in istighfar. Whatever free time we have, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such a thing that a person in any condition, in every condition, it is permissible for him to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who is in the state of Janabat is in the need of ghusl, then that person is not permissible for him to read Quran, he cannot read Salah. But dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is permissible for him. A person when he is in his workplace, maybe it is difficult for him, he is serving his customers, whatever work he is doing, he cannot read extra nafil salah at the time. Maybe he cannot open the Quran. But istighfar, zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is very easy for everybody. So as far as we can, whenever we have free time, to engage ourselves in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in these trying times and difficult conditions, specifically to involve ourselves in istighfar and seeking forgiveness on behalf of ourselves, on behalf, on behalf of the whole of the Muslim Ummah. This will now benefit a person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq to see how we can bring these things, how we can realize that the sign of Qiyamah coming in front of a person itself is nothing. It is of no significance, it is of no importance. But when it will direct him to change his life, to bring his life back onto the commands of Allah, to bring his life onto the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then him witnessing that sign will become a means of benefit for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq to see how we can understand this and bring these things within our life. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين